Good Saturday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Anna, keeping you updated with what's going on with both the weather currently in the Mid-South area for Saturday evening and what may be happening in areas very close to us as we go into the next couple of days as Florence becomes a tropical storm going back to a hurricane once again and could be causing some problems into and around the southeastern United States coastline in the next few days. Uh, again, could be some pretty nasty weather in parts of the United States around the Carolinas. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little while. This is going to be kind of a little herky-jerky tonight doing the forecast. We are going to be throwing out the usual format and giving you again a lot more information as to uh, what's going on into and around the area because we will see the possibility of some more showers and thunderstorms. We have them in progress at this time, but once again we could be looking at severe weather for parts of the Mid-South area, so we could see again the potential of some more problems out there with, again, severe weather, which means that if we get severe weather for Shelby County or other parts of the Mid-South, I'm going to have to drop this netcast very quickly and get into what's going on for, again, the benefit of our broadcast community as well. And we'll bring you more information on that throughout the rest of the evening, but that'll be live on TV instead of right here. Rest of the evening, again, should be seeing the possibility of some more showers and thunderstorms out there for tonight and into the rest of the day today. Day. We've seen showers and thunderstorms out there, and we should see, again, the potential for some more activities uh, into around the Mid-South for the next several days. We'll talk more about that forecast coming up here uh, in just a little bit. Drop your location and your weather into the comments section. If you've got weather reports out there, rain gauge information, uh, temperatures, high temperatures from the day, let's go ahead and see what goes on out there. Uh, like William Skage from Michigan, catch, catching 63 degrees. Kind of cool. Yeah, I bet that feels pretty nice nice out in that general area. Let's go ahead and get started for right now, give you an idea as to what's going on with the uh, overnight weather, if I can get the forecast to pop properly pop up here. Numbers again dropping into the mid to upper 60s. There will be an isolated chance of a shower or a thunderstorm into overnight. We're not looking at a huge amount of them, again diminishing slowly over the next couple of hours. And again, could be seeing a few showers mixed in with a few thunderstorms, but diminishing possibility of thunderstorms into overnight with temperatures back into the mid to upper 60s. Downtown Memphis in the post area of the thunderstorms moving on through. And again, rain speckled on the camera lens every once in a while catching a bit of some lightning out there and I believe if I'm not mistaken that the Liberty Bowl has uh, postponed the Southern Heritage Classic for tonight because we also have more showers and thunderstorms moving in to the area so we'll be seeing even more activity coming up a little bit later on so we might get in a quarter or two of football but once again it's just not worth everybody's life and safety out there to keep everybody uh, in an open air metal seated wet area with lightning around so that's again one of the things that they are keeping a very close eye on for tonight. Downtown Memphis, again, some flashes of lightning there taking place. And again, we are going to see more of that throughout the rest of the area for uh, much of the area for tonight. Again, if you've got pictures, we'd love to see them, but safety first and safety always. Let's make certain that we are paying attention to what's going on. It's indoors is your best bet with stuff like this moving around the area. Storm Tracker 3S radar, this is a view of Shelby County right here. Mississippi River on the left hand side of the screen, snaking on through through there. I-50, I-50, Highway 51, the 240 loop right in this area, eastern Shelby County, northern DeSoto County down here around the loop and into Midtown, East Memphis and Germantown and Collierville over here just to give you some benchmarks as to where you're looking for. Heaviest thunderstorms from southeastern parts of Tipton County down through southeastern Shelby County put this into motion and give you an idea as to what we've been looking at over the last couple of hours. Those showers and thunderstorms that were over southwest Shelby County, those diminished pretty quickly, but then these popped up over here within about just the last half hour or so, so it's getting a lot more noisy. Western Fayette County, eastern Shelby County at this time, just past the top of the 8 o'clock hour and more potential again of the same activity throughout the rest of the evening out there. Here's a wider view of Storm Tracker 3S radar. Northern Mississippi here, eastern Arkansas, West Tennessee and Memphis again sitting right smack in the middle of the screen. There's those showers and thunderstorms redeveloping over parts of Shelby County. Back around Dyersburg, close to the area around uh, Blytheville, north of Ripley, we've got a few more thunderstorms popping up here in northern Lauderdale County. 
back to around Brownsville on I-40, just west of Jackson in western Madison County, redeveloping thunderstorms here briefly. Now it appears they're starting to kind of diminish by just a little bit. This is the way these thunderstorms have been. It's not a powerful severe weather threat, but the thunderstorms develop, drift, collapse, start back over again. Pulse-type thunderstorms is what we usually call them, and that's pretty much what we're looking at for right now. Northern parts of Mississippi, we've had some thunderstorms developing down around Vihalia, southwestern Marshall County, eastern Tate County. Those turned into showers. More rumbles of thunder now around Olive Branch, back to around the Capelville area, moving on over to the east-northeast, and then back across northwestern parts of DeSoto County, northwest Mississippi, right around the 55 61, 69 triangle area there. Northeastern Tunica County picking up some more heavier amounts of rainfall. And another line of thunderstorms which has been developing over eastern Arkansas, south of Highway 64, Wynn, Forest City, Colt down to Mariana, and now just into around northwestern parts of Phillips County in Arkansas. So we've got plenty of activity across much of the area, and we'll continue again to see more activity like this off and on throughout the rest of the evening. Again, we have had no severe weather, but we have had a number of uh, minor flood advisories, and of course we have had, again, some significant weather advisories, which is just one step below a warning. So we are keeping a very close eye on that, and so far the National Weather Service uh, gazing at some other monitors out of view from here from you. So again, keeping an eye on more thunderstorms out there for right now. Uh, thanks to everybody checking in uh, into the area. Nick Cook, where's the polygon? There is no polygon because there is no severe weather at this time, so we have no polygons to show you at this point. And and not going to be seeing, again, anything in the way of uh, hopefully any watches tonight, although there is that marginal threat of, again, some severe weather uh, in post portions of the area there. Uh, William Skage, yes, we'll be talking about Hurricane Florence coming up here in just a little bit. Thank you very much uh, for that one. Uh, Sandy Comer, what about Pope, Mississippi? Again, northern Mississippi will be picking up those chances of showers and thunderstorms uh, throughout the rest of the evening, so more opportunities for that throughout the next several hours on there. Jennifer Gooch, Mike Rose will be a muddy mess in the morning. I'm assuming that's the soccer uh, fields around Hacks Cross or Forest Hill Irene, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, again, thanks a lot for checking in from there. Again, for much of the rest of the area, see Leslie Chang, Lightning Needs to Sup, Southern Heritage Football Game has been postponed. I believe it has been postponed for the evening, and they're not going to take a chance of getting the uh, game going again for tonight at this point in time. Again, we'll wait for a confirmation from the sports department on that uh, to see what goes on with that there. Again, we're keeping our eyes on numerous showers and thunderstorms passing through the area, and you're thinking, well, if it's not severe, what's the big thing? Putting several thousand people in an open-air stadium with metal seats and water around and lightning all over the place, even if it's more than 10 to 15 miles away, if there's a thunderstorm in Collierville, you can get hit by lightning in central Memphis. If there's a thunderstorm over West Memphis, Arkansas, you can get hit in Brunswick and Shelby County. It's very easy. Lightning can strike 20 to 30 miles away from a parent thunderstorm. That's how quick it goes. That's how far it can go. They're called bolts from the blue, and they can happen. Just because it doesn't happen every single day doesn't mean it doesn't happen. So again, safety first and safety always on that. We're still getting some pretty good lightning on our cameras for tonight. Currently in the Mid-South, we're getting a decent amount of rainfall as well. Haven't seen any flash flood warnings just yet, but that could be possible. Lee County School District, you were almost dry a couple of hours ago. Now nearly two inches of rainfall in southeastern Arkansas. St. Agnes, St. Dominic, now just over an inch and fractions of an inch elsewhere across eastern Arkansas for tonight. Rest of the forecast into tonight and chances of showers and thunderstorms will be going on through tomorrow late in the afternoon and into the evening, excuse me, and then clearing out as we get into Monday. And temperatures decently below normal for this time of the year, back into the mid to upper 70s for the high temperatures. Now through the rest of the week, less chances of showers and thunderstorms than what we're seeing for tonight, but still possible. So we will see those activity uh, into and around the area there from what goes on. Uh, Peggy Speck did not know this about lightning. Yes, lightning can, again, be very dangerous. In fact, our own photojournalist Jeff Woods was at the Liberty Bowl hearing people complaining as the game was coming to an end that, well, it's just rainfall. What do we have to worry about? Let's get the game going. He's like, no, 
snow. It's not just rainfall, it's actually lightning, and if that can strike from many miles away, your life is in danger, and it's not worth injuring or getting people killed over a football game. So very wise decision from what goes on at the uh, Southern Heritage Classic tonight. When and if that game gets repeated or replayed, we will let you know coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. Now, unfortunately, the temperatures here are not going to last. We'll be back in the lower 90s by the time we hit next weekend or so. And again, more potential for more showers and thunderstorms uh, into the area. More potential of some hot weather out there through September, it looks like. But at least we'll get rid of some of the rainfall for next weekend. So that looks pretty good. And temperatures in the mid-80s as we go through mid-September coming up in the next about 7 to 10 days or so out there. All right, going uh, into the tropics real quick. Over the last couple of days, Florence was a hurricane as it made its way off of the coast of Africa all the way across the Atlantic Ocean and made its way back to the west. So it's been tracking this direction. It was a hurricane for a while. It encountered some shear winds going in different directions in the atmosphere. Now that's great for severe weather. It's not great for hurricanes or tropical storms. Also, the dusty, dry air from parts of Africa kind of surrounded the storm and did a very good job of dropping it back to tropical storm strength. So again, winds at this point in time are down to about 70 miles per hour while they're back up again, but they were down into the 60 mile per hour range last couple of days. So it is now a tropical storm, but things have really changed. And if you haven't seen the forecast in the last couple of days, this is what is the current conventional wisdom as to what we're going to be looking for. The storm is going to be a hurricane again probably by Sunday morning Sunday afternoon at the very latest. Category 1 here, it's going to increase in strength according to the path that this is going to be taking over warmer waters of the western Atlantic and again low shear. There's going to be less in the way of winds going different direction, more unidirectional winds helps these storms to develop. Now into the next several days as we head toward the end of next week, Round about the area coming up around Thursday afternoon and evening, this becomes a major hurricane. That's Category 3 and above on the Sapphire-Simpson scale. That's winds of 125 miles per hour plus. That's what a major hurricane is classified as. As it gets closer to the area around the East Coast, mainly at this time, the conventional wisdom, again, is going to be, again, toward the Carolinas. This is the average path right here. The storm could go anywhere in this white line area. So it could go farther north toward North Carolina and Virginia. It could go farther south down toward Florida. So right now, the storm, again, the median pathway is going to be taking it right toward the border between North to South Carolina as a Category 4 hurricane as we get into around Thursday afternoon. If you're planning on traveling into this area, I'd say anywhere north of Orlando all the way up to D.C., I would be very, very flexible about your travel plans at this point to be, again, very safe at this time. This is where we are talking about possible life-threatening conditions. And again, this is not some place you want to be heading into just to be forced to get back out again when the officials issue the warnings and the evacuation orders. Now, parts of the coastal areas for both North and South Carolina are under a state of emergency tonight. That does not mean mass panicking and riot in the streets. What that means is the local, civic, and state governments can start planning and moving uh, rescue sources and equipment and personnel and materiel into place. It does not mean the catastrophic breakdown of society, as some people have told me that, oh, well, they're just trying to cause problems. No, they're not. State of emergency, different levels, helps, again, readiness get into place for storms like this. We can see these storms coming many days away, but if we don't do something about it beforehand, that's just as bad as just waiting until afterwards to say, oh, we couldn't have done anything. So this storm moving in this particular area, again, anything from the Outer Banks down to around Savannah, Georgia, and places beyond that, I would watch this very carefully as the storm gets a lot closer from into and around the areas of the East Coast state. So keep it tuned to News Channel 3. There is also the possibility, and again, some of the computer models that we look at are showing this very disturbing trend as to this storm curving a little bit farther back toward the coastal states and then quite possibly turning and stalling or doing a loop-the-loop -loop 
and then heading up the west, heading up the east coast states in the western Atlantic. Now, if that happens, and that's a far cry from a guarantee, but if that happens, if this storm sticks around for a while, remember one of the biggest killers in these storms is not just the winds, it's not just the storm surge, but it's the heavy flash flooding rainfall that comes on down through it. This is not a storm that you want to try to ride out. This is one you want to be very far away from, if at all possible. And again, if it takes that slow churning loop right there over a few days, that could really exacerbate the flooding and the danger to property and human life. Again, this is going to be a possible catastrophic storm for the East Coast. And this is something that we need to watch very carefully over the next few days, and we'll bring you updates on that as well. Now, not just talking about Florence at this point in time, but we have other storms to talk about a little bit farther out into the Atlantic. We now have two tropical storms. We now have the now named Isaac. This was number nine on the tropical storm just a few hours ago. Now strong enough for a name. Isaac is the tropical storm here. Helene is just off the coast and expected again to make its way back to the west. So we have not only Florence, but we also have Isaac and Helene both of which are going, again, roughly in a westerly direction here. But again, from right now, according to some of the models, it looks like that Helene may be peeling off and heading its way up into the northern Atlantic. At least that's what a few of the computer models were talking about. There were a couple of computer models that were aiming Isaac a little bit closer toward Hispaniola the Southern Caribbean, and the Gulf of Mexico. So again, that's way in the future, but it's one of those things that we really, really, really need to keep an eye out as we approach the peak of hurricane season in the next couple of days. Waters are warm enough, obviously, to get these things going and to sustain them very well. So once again, this is going to be, again, uh, the possibility for some uh, damage and some life-threatening situations uh, into and around the area for right now. So this is where we're going to be seeing uh, some pretty necessary needs for you to pay attention to the weather and to watch what goes on. The forecast tonight will not be the same next week at this point. So you really have to watch what goes on because these numbers will change as will our forecast here in the Mid-South. It's just, again, a necessary need to keep up to date with what's going on with the weather out there. Raising girls, thank you very much for a nice rainbow, double rainbow from Ellendale Park in Bartlett. William Frog, I hope I'm saying that right. Thanks for a nice Nice sunset from earlier this week and also thanks to Arkansas SEC 73 for some sunlight getting through the storm clouds from tropical storm former tropical storm Gordon as it passed through parts of Arkansas this last week if you've got weather pictures we'd love to see them tweet them to me at aonic underscore wreg3 or Facebook or email or Instagram and I'll find them out there someplace let's go back to radar for just a little bit time is just about 822 on Saturday evening and again a good line of thunderstorms over portions of eastern portions of uh, Shelby County making their way back up to the east northeast and those will be continuing to head on out. We do not have any new advisories from the National Weather Service so no severe weather to talk about at this time. Taking a look at the entire Mid-South and kicking the animation back into gear here. New line of thunderstorms back to eastern Arkansas from Forest City, Colt, Wynn, down to just to the west of uh, around Helena, West Helena, and due west of the Tunica area for right now. And then thunderstorms from here all the way up I-40 to about Jackson, Tennessee. Everything moving to the northeast at about maybe 20 to 25 miles per hour. And going to be seeing again more potential of more showers and thunderstorms out there for the Mid-South area. Uh, Patricia Arnold, yes, it's raining all around except for northeast Mississippi, northeast Arkansas, and parts of northwest Tennessee, so not quite all around in that area for right now. Carolyn Burks, are we officially in hurricane season? That started June 1st and will continue until December 1st, and the peak of the season is only a couple of days away. It happens on September 10th. That's the midpoint of the hurricane season, so we'll continue to see that uh, through the rest of the area for right now. Uh, 1,000 runners at Shelby Farms at 7 o'clock to run. What should we expect? Jody Radikoff fisher uh, There will be the potential of some more showers and thunderstorms out there. Let me go back to the forecast, which somehow got skipped over uh, for the area tonight. Through News Channel 3 at 10, 
We'll continue again to see these showers and thunderstorms out there, but as we go through and after midnight, it looks like we'll see a general lessening of the showers and thunderstorms. Now, tomorrow morning early, right before daybreak, mostly showers out there, but we'll also see some refiring of thunderstorms as we get into around late tomorrow afternoon and evening, and another round of possibility of showers and thunderstorms will be sticking around through tomorrow morning into tomorrow afternoon, and possibly a repeat performance for parts of the Mid-South as we go throughout the rest of Sunday. So anything going on out there outside for anything happening into and around the Mid-South area outdoors, you're going to have to keep an eye to the sky to see what exactly is going to be going on out there. So please keep an eye on what is happening into and around the area for tonight and into tomorrow. But once again, for tonight, any outdoor plans, this is what you're going to have to deal with, with these thunderstorms continuing to pop up across portions of the area. Fortunately, no severe weather and no watches, no warnings. Let's hope it stays that way, and we'll keep a very close eye on that. We'll have an update on what could be tropical storm to Hurricane Florence by around Sunday morning. Definitely going to tune into News Channel 3 Daybreak for an update as to what's going on with the storms there. So we see, again, some potential for some stronger weather here, but not from Florence. Doesn't seem to be a our weather anytime soon, but we'll see again more potential in the way of showers and thunderstorms into the next several days. I'll have an update tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. Kristen Holloway has all the day's news. Megan Rice has an update on the Liberty Bowl, the Southern Heritage Classic, the postponement tonight, and when or if that'll be rescheduled. That'll be tonight on News Channel 3 at 10, so keep an eye to us on air, and it'll be coming up again in just about 90 minutes or so on News Channel 3. Thanks to everybody for joining us. Keep it tuned to News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the weekend for updates on news, weather, and sports. And don't forget to join us here for more information about your forecast at wreg.com weather.